Hi, crafties, and welcome to Weekend Crafting Adventures. I'm Kim, and um, in this episode, I am going to be sharing with you my experience crafting a wood subway sign with removable vinyl. So there are a couple of things that inspired me to do this crafting project. And the first one is that I have been thinking for a long time about how I want to try to use removable vinyl. I have crafted with heat transfer vinyl, puffy vinyl, permanent vinyl, but I have never done a craft project where I have used removable vinyl. And so I wanted to try and figure out how I could use that. And then I also um, have this wood welcome sign that I picked up at Target last fall in the dollar area. It was one of the $5 items, but it's a nine and a half inch wide by about 42 inch tall welcome sign and it's a porch sign and when I saw it I definitely thought I can do something with that so between the removable vinyl and this porch sign and the fact that I have been looking online at all of these really fun um uh, subway signs where people take categories of things that are important to them and just kind of list them on the sign. Some of them are places. Sometimes I see them and they've got dates or um, maybe vacation destinations, things like that. But definitely that kind of sparked my interest in trying to create a personalized custom subway sign for our family using this removable vinyl and the um, welcome sign that I picked up last fall at Target. The only resources that I used um, in researching this project was actually just scanning the web, looking at Google images of different subway signs, what kind of categories were out there, different ideas like that, and then also going to Etsy and searching subway signs, custom subway signs to just get a better idea of what kind of category category ideas there were and what kind of fonts, what they looked like, how people were setting them up. So really those were the only resources that I used when I was researching this project. Let me tell you a little bit about a couple of materials that I used that are not my typical crafting corner materials for this episode. First of all, um, the uh, welcome sign that I found at Target like I said, it was in the dollar section, but it was $5. I was going to use that as the background. And I did decide that I wanted to have a black background for my subway sign. So I am using that black tricorn Sherman Williams paint that I used for my Coyer doormat project. So I'm just reusing the rest of that paint on this welcome sign. Uh, the removable vinyl, definitely an important piece to this project. And also one of my new most favorite crafting accessories is 3M Scotch Ruler Masking Tape. And I'll tell you more about that when I get into what I did to create this subway sign. So let me tell you a bit about the experience of creating this subway sign. Um, the first thing I needed to do, and I knew I needed to do it Friday night, was 
paint the sign. I'm working all week. And so in order to get this craft project done in the weekend, I needed to make sure that I got my wood sign painted Friday so that it had plenty of time to dry before I was going to be putting any of the vinyl onto it. So while I was painting my sign on Friday night, I started thinking about what kind of subway sign I wanted to create. And music is a huge part of our lives. So I started thinking about maybe I should put all of the concerts that my husband and I have been to on the subway sign. And then I started thinking about all the places that we've camped together, um, places that we've traveled on vacation. And I kept going back and forth between different ways that I could create memories and have this sign represent some of those fun memories. What I ended up deciding was that something that we both really love to do together that we have done even before we were married when we were dating like 25 years ago is that we love to ski together we love to ski and snowboard and be outside and so what I ended up deciding to do for our subway sign is a list of all of the different ski mountains that we have skied together. And the more and more I thought about this, I got excited to just kind of think back about where we have skied together. And there actually are about 15 different mountains that we've skied together over the years. We've skied at a lot of them many times, but there's 15 different ones that I was going to be able to put on this subway sign. So once I had my sign painted and I knew what the category was that I was going to be putting on our sign, I had to figure out the fonts. I knew that I wanted to use different fonts. I didn't want them all to be the same. So that's when I got into my Cricut design space. I created a rectangle guide shape that I made nine and a half inches wide, about 42 inches long, which is the size of this porch sign that I got. Um, at Target. And I started just trying to figure out the size of the fonts, the different fonts, how I wanted them to look. So um, that was fun, um, figuring all of that out and just kind of planning out what this sign was going to look like. And then I started taking the removable vinyl. I went with a white removable vinyl. I thought that it really would look great against the black tricorn paint. And so um, getting that vinyl cut, no problem. But the weeding process, again, took quite some time. So just weeding out all of the different ski mountains. I went back and forth between putting Colorado, um, just the abbreviation for the state at the end of each of them. And what I actually ended up doing was just having the names of the ski mountains that are in Colorado, but then any ski mountains that we um, skied that were not in Colorado, I made sure to also add where it was located just because I thought that that would look fun on the sign. And like I said, there were 15 and we had some debate because when I was pregnant with my oldest son, we traveled to Utah for a family ski trip and I 
cross country skied, but my husband was at a different mountain. And so we decided we can't count that one because we did not ski at the mountain together. So I didn't get to count the Utah ski trip, but I still feel like 15 was a lot. And so I had a lot to work with. Um, got the vinyl weeded out. And then I get to the part where I'm planning how I want to line up the different ski mountains on the sign. And this is where my ruler masking tape It's awesome. I took the ruler masking tape and cut it off right where um, the 12 inch mark was so that I could start it on the side of the sign and run it vertically all the way to the top. And the reason I wanted to do this was so when I was lining up the different ski mountain names, I could make sure that I had them exactly where I wanted them to be. This ruler tape for me, I'm a little bit obsessed with. I've used it in my last three crafting projects and I cannot say enough about how convenient it is to be able to have this little ruler masking tape on the side of my projects while I'm gluing or I'm lining things up. It just really has added something different to my crafting. So using that ruling ruler masking tape, I really was able to line up the ski mountains evenly, place them exactly where I wanted them to go. And the process of putting this removable vinyl onto the painted wood sign was really easy. I am really happy with how the vinyl looks on the sign and I love all of the ski mountains. Just so fun to see everywhere that we've skied together. And the fact that I used this removable vinyl I had a big space at the bottom of the sign that I'm keeping for when we add a couple of more mountains into our skiing life. And so I knew that I wanted to put something there to kind of hold the place because I didn't just want it to be a big empty spot on the sign. So I did cut out of the removable vinyl mountain fun and I put it down at the bottom of the sign and this way as we add more ski mountains to places that we've skied together I can remove that vinyl and add on more names of ski mountains So if there's three more, they'll fit. And if there's 10 more, I can take all of this vinyl off, resize everything and put it back on, which is why I ended up feeling like this removable vinyl was the perfect thing to use in this crafting project. So Let me tell you about my crafting keepers for this project. My first crafting keeper is going to be the 3M Scotch Ruler Masking Tape. I cannot say enough about it. It has really changed my crafting world and my projects and just is such a fun and functional, reasonably priced crafting accessory. So that is a crafting keeper. And my second crafting keeper for this episode is the removable vinyl. Like I just talked about, being able to resize one of the fonts or the ski um, mountains that we're at, adding more in, taking things off. This is the perfect project for that because we're not done exploring our skiing mountains yet. So um, that removable vinyl is my second crafting keeper. 
And my satisfaction rating for this project is a five. This was really fun. It's been a little bit since I have worked with vinyl. Um, I've done a lot of different kind of crafting recently. So it was fun to get back into using some vinyl in a project. I've never used the removable vinyl. So um, that added to it as well. And just the whole subway sign kind of theme and idea, I just really find it fun and inspiring to come up with a category that you can put together to represent something meaningful in your life and have it there to remind you of all of the fun and um, experiences and things that you've done together. So it is definitely a five. Um, I hope that maybe this crafting project inspires you to create your own custom subway sign with a fun category of something that makes you happy and you get that cricket off the shelf and get crafty. Until Till our next adventure, take care. That's all for this episode of Weekend Crafting Adventures. Now go get that Cricut machine off the shelf and get crafty. For more information on this crafting project, interesting tips, tricks, and techniques, visit wcapodcast.com. Until next time when we embark on another adventure.